BC, hello. It's gonna be a short and sweet video. I don't particularly feel like doing a fancy camera shot thing um, with titles and stuff. So I'm gonna do some recent vinyl finds. I've just done a uh, half an hour um, Skype session with Anthony, so I'm feeling pretty talked out. I also shot the second half of my BCLT from David Belson, so I'm not overly talkative, but I will give it my best shot and uh, we'll go from there. Now, a couple of these I've just shown to Anthony, so you may be seeing them twice, but I can uh, sort of give my thoughts a bit better. Um, this is a record that I have been uh, loving this week, uh, and I can't stop playing it. Uh, St. Etienne Fox Bass Alpha, this is their, it's their first record, isn't it? From 1993, two, one, three, 1991, okay, wow. Um, they sort of went off in a more sort of dance, not quite cheesy, but it does sound very dated now, um, sound. This is, this is... Um, it, it's really hard to describe. It's like a, it's, it does sound absolutely like a game from 1991. Um, but once you get past that, there's some really nice songs and you know, really nice samples, um, bits of almost acid house, bits of, um, indie pop, bits of funk samples, stuff like that in here. It's a, it's a really sort of, it sounds like summer to me. This, this, you know, it's spring here. I'm getting some really nice days, so this is going down a treat. Um, Saint Etienne, Fox Space Alpha. The track that I knew, look at that for a back cover. So of its time. Um, I did know one song that I used to have on a CD compilation, and that's the track uh, Nothing Can Stop Us. Uh, and that's the best track on the record, for sure. Um, have a listen to that one. But yeah, there's a really nice cover of uh, Neil Young's Only Love Can Break Your Heart on here, which is quite interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, it's there's a really nice review on here um, about how this is basically a love letter to London uh, in 1991, which I kind of understand. I like the idea behind that. Um, it's a lot. It's there's a whole like um, review on the back here uh, by John Savage about how it sounds like London and how it has a, a feel and. Um, you know how, how there's how they they take they take samples of like a northern soul, not London, but you know, um, yeah, I don't know. It's 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 cool. It does it does it does feel like a, a time and a place record, or it does feel like it's capturing a sound, um, you know, of, of a time. I guess that is a terrible review. That was not what I was trying to get across, but hopefully you get the idea. Um, is it all UK things apart from one? This is something that I've been after for a long time, and I, I got this um, a ludicrously cheap price, uh, The House of Love. Um, this is their self-titled record, um, an original UK pressing on creation. I want to say this is their first record, but I don't know, so that might not be true. Um, this is the, For me, the track that I, I've known for a long time, well, actually, no, I know, there's two tracks I've known for a long time from this record. Um, but I didn't know the rest of the album. I uh, the track "Love in a Car" and uh, "Christine," uh, which is like the opening song. Um, this has just got recently reissued as well as a two LP thing. But yeah, this is an original pressing. Absolutely wonderful, wonderful record. Um, yeah, uh, the House of Love and that that, that iconic artwork there. Um, I don't know how you want to describe this. I can't be bothered describing it. Um, sticking with the creation theme, this is a kind of an interesting record. Um, it is called I Love the Smell of Napalm, a Creation Records compilation. So this is a comp of early Creation Records stuff. So before, you know, My Bloody Valentine, before Ride, um, before Oasis, um, before the big, bigger names, before, you know, uh, Teenage Fan Club. Um, the big... Biggest name on here of note is uh, Primal Scream. So this is Primal Scream before they discovered uh, Samplers and Acid House and Andy Weatherall. Um, this is them in full jangle pop mode. There's a couple songs on there from these guys. The Weather Prophets is another band name I know. Um, this is like a straight uh, jangle pop, basically. It's it's a, a UK jangle pop uh, compilation, uh, 1986. 
Um, it's it's really nice. It's it's nice. It's pleasant. It's enjoyable. It's I could live without it. Um, but it's really look at that. We got a little bit of greenery thing going on there. Um, yeah, I, I it's cool. Uh, it was for ten dollars. I could you know pass it up just to hear some of the stuff. So there's nothing particularly stand standing out. Um, it all does sort of blend a bit, but it, it sort of it's amazing how a lot of these bands sounded very similar. Yeah, you go. Uh, Creation Records compilation. Um, speaking of label compilations, this is uh, 4AD compilation called Lonely is an Eyesore. Um, takes its uh, name from a lyric on the final track by... Uh, I forgot what it is. Is it for, No, it's not Throwing Muses. It could be. I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, this is uh, Lonely is an Eyesore. Yeah. Uh, and if you want to sort of learn about the 4AD label, you can either read the book or take a shortcut and get this compilation here. It, it basically contains all the, all the big names. Um, it's Mortal Coil, Dead Can Dance, Clamors, Clan of Zymox, uh, Cocktail Twins, um, Wolfgang Press. You know, it's a really great way to hear a lot of these bands for the, for the first time, I guess. Um, uh, really great artwork too. Uh, dark, uh, not quite post-punk, but it's definitely early goth, you know. Um, ties into bands like Bauhaus and stuff like that. Um, very cool. And and from a yeah, color box on here. Um, yeah, I don't know. It's it's very cool. It, even just from the branding artwork point of view, it, it's very cool. It's very cool. Um, I'm really loving this at the moment. I've been playing it heaps. When I was putting records away, I realized that I'd missed three or four records I was meant to show. So I'm going to do a quick edit in and show you these five things that I completely missed. So I also picked up um, three of the 12 inches by uh, the band A. Arcane. Um, these are really cheap to get. Um, I've just been sort of, I hadn't seen them around and they all popped up, all three of them. So I grabbed all three. This is the first one, uh, the Lolita Oops. EP uh, on 4AD. Um, each of these three EPs um, came out just before or after their um, albums, and you can definitely hear with each one there's a progression in sound. This one was produced by uh, Robin Hitchcock. Uh, sorry, uh, what's his name? Bloody hell, not Robin. Guthrie from uh, Cocktail Twins. So Air came before they formed the band. They saw Cocktail Twins live, and they said, we want to start a band. And as they, as they started, they started playing and practicing and... Uh, they got signed to 4AD and they said, can, can we get Robin to produce this? Which was a really ballsy thing to do at the time. And he said, yes. So this is A.R. Kane in full Cocktail Twins uh, mode, dream pop mode, uh, spacious, dreamy, um, exploding guitars. Yeah, re really wonderful. Um, yeah, on, on 4AD, it's really great. Um, yeah, that artwork is wonderful as well. And on the back, she's uh, got a massive knife behind the back. There's a really cool um, interview um, talking about this EP that I'll post a link to below that I listen to. Um, next one is the When You're Sad EP. Look at that artwork for talk about a time and a place. Um, around this time, uh, Pump Up the Volume had just uh, blown up, so that was obviously the hype around that. Uh, this contains yeah, the track When You're Sad which is probably, actually this is, I'll do this in chronological order. This was probably the one before that, uh, which is a lovesick EP. Um, yeah, this is, this is really interesting. This is definitely more in the vein of uh, uh, the album 69 they put out. Um, a lot more, less focused on um, shoegazy sounds and a lot more focused on really spaced out dreamy sounds. And they get a bit more experimental. The second side has... Uh, a track, um, is it called Is This Love? And Is This D Dub something? Yeah, Is This Is this Is and Is This Dub? Uh, and they're sort of like um, almost dance beats with spoken wordy rap and these like um, sort of avant-garde saxophones over the top, uh, which is really cool, really different for them, which I really enjoyed. Um, yeah, it's really wonderful. Definitely 
around the sound of uh, 69 this. Is it their second record? Yeah, lovesick. That artwork is very of its time as well. Uh, yeah, very cool. Very, very place to pick up this because you can't hear these tracks anywhere else. And yeah, back back to this one. So this is the, the third one. Here they've gone back to more, not really shoegaze, but not really driven rock sounds. The guitars aren't so, it's not, it's more focused uh, on driving songs and um, less focused, focused on a bigger sound, I guess. In the way that um, 69, I guess, doesn't have massive sounding things, but it's definitely more rock uh, or driven or focused, I guess. Um, yeah, this is great. Uh, all three of them are really good and they're all very different. Um, the track, yeah, check out When when You're Sad. Um, for some reason it reminds me of that track, uh, When You're a Boy by David Bowie. Uh, from, is it from Lodger? I can't remember. Anyway, uh, yeah, great. So that's those. Um, cool, very happy to pick those up. And then I picked up a couple of sevens, breaking my own rules, because normally I only pick up New Zealand seven inches, but uh, I, I saw these and I thought, all right, I'll, I'll give them a go. Um, this is on the uh, famous Sarah Records label, Sarah 55. Uh, I didn't know much about the Sarah. I knew of the label and what it meant or what it put out, uh, but I didn't know any artists on it really. Um, so yeah, this is a Blue Boy, a Sarah 55. Really, really nice jangle pop, indie pop. Um, I guess they were known for sort of like that twee indie sound. Uh, later on, it's a catalogue of all, all the stuff. Uh, lots of names to check out on here. The Sea Urchins being a big one that I recognise. Um, yeah, really cool. I need to do some reading on Sarah Records. This is another one here. Um, Eternal Breathe, uh, Sarah number 31. Uh, this is really cool. Uh, just classic sh uh, shoegaze. Um, yeah, but very cool to give these a listen. Definitely worth picking up. And um, the third one I picked up was the Telescopes uh, Celeste. Um, doesn't that artwork just whoop, look like, just, you know, it's on Creation Records, but it's very, like, uh, slow divey. Reminds me of the artwork from Slow Dive. Um, yeah, on uh, Creation Records there. Yeah, so the, the first track is almost like a 60s Sykes shoegazy thing. And then the second side is definitely more in that slow dive uh, atmospheric vein. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed listening to this. It was very cool. Look how young they are there. <laughs> All right, so there's those. I will chop this into the video, and normal viewing will continue. All right, so there was a bit of a theme there that was kept nice and short and sweet. Um, yeah, that's where I'm at, really. I am heading to Melbourne in three weeks, so anything I see in a record store now, I just have to think, nope, save your money, you're going to Melbourne don't buy. So that's where I'm at with my headspace. Uh, yeah, anyway, um, hope you're all doing well and I will talk to you all soon. Bye.